Hi, I'm Matt Williams and welcome to Soil Lab. Today we're going to be filming our wrap-up video on the pH adjustment trial. If you haven't had a chance to already, please watch our introductory and update videos linked in the description below to learn more about what we're doing and what we're tracking and what the data looked like along the way. And today we're going to be looking at the culmination of those 240 individual soil test reports and I'm going to summarize them into meaningful and useful data that you can use in your lawn or your garden. So let's go ahead and take a look at those trends and treatments right now. So as you'll remember, we started off with four unique soils ranging from very acidic all the way to very basic. Our very acidic soil, as you can see here, had a starting pH of 4.28. So that's quite acidic, below that optimal range that we'd really be trying to achieve. So what did we do to try to increase this pH? Well, we applied calcitic lime, so that's calcium carbonate, at two different rates, at 80 pounds per thousand square feet and 40 pounds per thousand. When we think about that in application, the 80 pound rate would be more of a garden rate or a pre-plant rate in a turf situation. The 40 pound per thousand rate would be more of a top dress, something to put over a permaculture garden or over existing turf. Well, what we learned is that from that starting pH of 4.28 in all of these soils, we were able to increase soil pH all the way up after four months to 5.22, so nearly a one pH unit change over a four month period. Again, this is just with a single application. Well, what did that lower rate do with the calcitic lime? It increased it as well up to nearly five, and that value was the same as the high rate of the dolomitic lime. So, we learned that the calcitic lime at the high rate increased it significantly, and that the calcitic lime at 40 pounds and the dolomitic lime at 80 pounds were roughly equivalent. Now, did the dolomitic lime at the lower rate work? It sure did, it just didn't increase that pH nearly as much. So, what does this tell us? If we need magnesium, dolomitic lime would be a great option, preferably at that higher rate. If we don't need any magnesium, that calcitic lime is gonna be a little faster acting and a little longer lasting. Now, did we see the same trend in an acidic soil with a slightly higher starting pH? We did. We saw the exact same trend when our starting pH was around 6.06. .06. Now, is that a pH level that I'd typically be concerned with? No, but for the sake of the study, we wanted to be sure we were trying a very acidic and an acidic soil. So again, what we saw here, the calcitic lime at the higher, highest rate increased our pH by one full pH unit from 6.06 .06 to 7.07. .07. The calcitic lime at 40 pounds and the dolomitic lime at 80 pounds uh, were roughly equivalent but did increase that pH as well as did that dolomitic lime at the lower rate. So we saw the same trends in both our very acidic soil and our acidic soil where we got movement of a maximum of about one pH unit with a single treatment. Not all of us are battling acidic soils or not all of us are trying to amend acidic soils. If you're in a more arid region, oftentimes we're trying to reduce soil pH from that uh, basic soil down to closer to neutral. And that's certainly the case in the region where I live. So this basic soil had a starting pH of 7.49. So just slightly above what that optimal range would be. So maybe we wanna bring that pH down. Well, we were able to do that with each of our treatments. Uh, we know that a lot of folks are wanting to use citric acid right now. So we tried citric acid at two and four pounds per thousand, a single application, and we did see a reduction in pH, but the rate here didn't really seem to matter. As we looked at our elemental sulfur rates, as expected, the four pound per thousand rate reduced it, and the eight pound per thousand rate reduced it more significantly. So certainly single applications of elemental sulfur can drive that pH down, and these are at rates that are reasonable to top dress with. We were also fortunate or unfortunate enough to find uh, an even higher pH, a more basic or a very basic soil here locally that had a starting pH of, oh, 8.36. Now, one thing that we saw here is that this soil was extremely resistant to change in pH. We saw that throughout the whole study. And so at the end of the day, what we learned in this soil was regardless of the rate of citric acid or the rate of elemental sulfur, 
statistically there was no significant change. So in reality, what would we do in a soil like this? Well, we would be choosing our fertilizers wisely, trying to find acidifying fertilizers, and we'd also be using repeat applications. We'll address that more in our takeaways section. So the main takeaways after four months of this study and after 240 individual soil tests um, were, were really many. The first takeaway is that we were able to move the needle in each of these trials except for that very basic soil. So in three of our four unique soils, we were able to adjust pH with the amendments that we chose and the rates that we chose. Um, these are reasonable rates to use in the lawn and the garden. In our acidic and very acidic soil, the calcitic lime at 80 pounds per thousand was our top performer. It adjusted pH the most, followed by the calcitic lime at 40 pounds, as well as the dolomitic lime at 80. In addition to that, our top performer in the basic soil was our elemental sulfur at 8 pounds per thousand, followed by elemental sulfur at half that rate at 4 pounds per thousand. Recall the citric acid at either two or four pounds did move the needle, but not as much and we didn't see differences. And that's gonna lead to another one of our takeaways. One thing I didn't point out particularly in this was that we did see some changes in our untreated control pH and why is that? Well, we saw those changes in the untreated control pH is likely due to our irrigation water pH. Our irrigation water pH in this study was either right at neutral, pH 7, or it was slightly acidic, down to around pH 6.7. So that can change your pH up or down through the course of several months. And that's something you could expect to see at home as well. As I mentioned, one of the takeaways is that single applications may not be the most effective. We wanted to demonstrate the use of a single application for those of us who just want to sling in the spring, for example. Um, so these single applications, although they did change pH, you know, up to a full pH unit, if we were looking for larger adjustments in pH, more than one pH unit, we would likely want to use more frequent applications at lower rates throughout the growing season. In that very basic soil that we had with the exceptionally high pH, we would want to couple the regular amendments at low rates multiple times through the year with highly acidifying fertilizers such as ammonium sulfate. Of course, we want to be annually monitoring our pH if we're trying to actively adjust that pH, and then we can adjust our practices accordingly based on the progress we've made or haven't made. I really hope you enjoyed this study. We sure enjoyed doing it. If you appreciate this content and look forward to future content, please like, subscribe, feel free to share, and of course, I'll see you in the lab.